first year UOL uh, student studying econ and politics. And my topic for today is the Arab Spring. A fight for peace or a violent underwear. Before I get on, I'd like to tell a story of this man who once used to be a little boy, dreamt of being big, dreamt of doing something in his life. But circumstances had it the other way. And he was forced to work as a little kid at the age of 10. He worked in factories. He worked at shopping malls, trying to piece together a little bit of money he could to buy himself and his family, his younger sisters, an education. He started working at the age of 10, and finally at the age of around 24, he put his money together and bought a food, bought a food vending shop. He was selling vegetables on the street. But unfortunately, there was this evil baron, and some of his minions decided to trouble him. They tried to extort money from him, they tried to intimidate him, but he wouldn't budge. It took the barons and his minions two years to try to get an extortion out of him, but still he wouldn't budge. At the point of his frustration and his intent on pure anger, he decided to do the unthinkable. Now, he didn't kill anyone, he killed himself. He went out on the streets, he poured kerosene on himself, and he set himself on fire. But this, a man, of the dreams, and dreams now burning in ashes, wasn't just there lying on the roads. It resonated. It resonated around his land. The people rose up. The people ran on the streets. The people screamed. The people shouted. The people felt his agony. And the Baron knew his days were over. But this is not a story. It is the truth. This man was named Muhammad Bawazazi, and he was from Tunisia. He burned himself for the sake of the people. He was frustrated to the end. People, what the, the, his own country was troubling him. What could he have been done? So in the end, he decided to kill himself. Now, I come to the main topic. What was the Arab Spring? Now, the Arab Spring was a series of revolutions and revolts occurring in the Persian Gulf states and the North African states. These, uh, this. So it first started from Tunisia. So from Tunisia, the movement spread through Libya, through Egypt, and all the way to Syria. All the countries in this map were affected by the thing. They had either minor clashes or major political disruptions. But for this presentation, I would like to focus on Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, and Syria. Now, why did it happen? A very fundamental cause was people were living in these countries under, under, under regimes for since 1950s and 1960s. They didn't have an issue. But slowly, the country started to westernize, a little bit at a time. So with the, with the advent of social media, the youth and the labor decide, read online what was happening in other countries. And they felt, it's not fair. We have to answer to someone, whereas they in the other worlds live free. They are free to do whatever. They are not obligated to follow a particular path. And they decided that we should react. So they noticed that the countries were riddled with four major things. One, authoritarian governments. Two, political corruption. Three, human rights violations. And four, kleptocracy. These were the f there were many reasons for them to revolt, but these were the four main ones. And the self-immolation of Muhammad Bawazizi served as a catalyst. So let's look at the outcome. People revolted. What happened after that? Let's look at the good outcomes first. Egypt. President Hosni Mubarak was ousted, parliament dissolved, and the constitution was suspended, and the first democratic elections were held in Egypt. That's a good result. The people there are happy, they live, they're free to live their dreams. People there are happy. Next is Tunisia. Prime Minister Ganauchi resigns, political prisoners are released, new constitution formed, a new parliament is formed, and Tunisia right now is formally, is right now, as of now, a parliamentary republic. People there are happy. This is just a good outcome. Now let's look at the bad outcome. Libya. Dictator Muhammad Gaddafi was ousted by the rebels and was also killed by them. But the rebels had weak leaders. And so the people from the bottom of the rebels decided that you know, we should take the country off for ourselves. Why not? So all these rebel groups split into different various factions. And as of now, they're fighting together for control of Libya and its vast oil resources. And the country's gone through civil war, 40,000 plus civilians killed. Next, you see this. 
Next, Syria. Syria, the government resigned. There was last defection from the Syrian army. The, the army which was run by the dictator, al-Bashar, uh, the people serving in the army decided Syria wasn't serving a right interest. So they left to various groups, Kurdish fighters. Some even went to ISIS to fight against. The clashes between the milit various military groups within the area led to a broad up civil war rampage. And the numbers now speak for themselves, civilians killed. This is the situation there right now. So, what is the morality of the Arab Spring? You see, so for, to explain this, I like to build, bring up history. I like to bring up two political authors from the past and understand what they would have said. First would be Thomas Hobbes, and the second one would be John Locke. Thomas Hobbes said that every society should elect a state head and stick with it regardless of how poor it is, just to maintain peace. You should wait for until the monarch dies or the next round of elections come, for you to choose the next head, just for the sake of maintaining peace. Whereas John Locke believed that the heads of societies are liable to their subjects and, and answer to them always. So he believed that a man is liable to three things, life, liberty, and property. So he believed that you could revolt against the heads if you, they did serve your interest best. I would just like a round of hands. Which of you agree with Thomas Hobbes' theory? Okay. And which of you agree with John Locke's theory? So yes, the state should have. You should revolt against the state. That's why she's the majority. But the thing is, all the people who revolted, revolted during the Arab Spring did not read any of the theories. They decided, they were angry, they were emotional, they just jumped into it. So that's what that's the whole point of Manji. That is the main point. There is no end to this. There is no morality in this. At the end of the day, you as a common man have a lot of power. But your power is diminished only to you. Until the entire society doesn't want to change, it can't change. In the end, the decision remains with the people of society. Once a decision is taken, so I have to deal with it regardless of what happens. And it's always a battle between a long life and a good life. So just to end, I'd like to say two words, be wise. <laughs>